there. I'm Judy Thompson, the Director of Clinical Education at the Association for Vascular Access. Today we're going to talk about the vasculature of the upper arm. So, a little um, orientation to what we're looking at. Left arm, left arm, starting up at the humerus, coming down we have the ulna and the radius. Remember in the anatomical position, the radius radiates outward radiates outward in the anatomical position. Palmer side up, dorsal side, it would be to the back. So arteries in this model, like many models, are red. The venous system is in blue. Let's start with a little vessel layer review and then we'll get right into those vessels of the upper arm for vascular access. Arteries take blood away from the heart to the tissues of the body. The veins return the blood back to the heart. The arterial system is a high pressure system, while veins are a low pressure system. Our peripheral veins have valves to prevent backflow of blood, and the arteries do not. Arteries and veins are similar in the fact they both have three vessel layers. The tunica adventitia is the outermost layer. It's comprised of connective tissue, collagen, and elastic fibers that surround and support the body of the vessel. The tunica media is the middle layer. It has nerve fibers that are responsible for dilation, constriction, and parasympathetic responses. And lastly, the tunica intima is the innermost layer. It's made up of smooth endothelial cells that allow free flow of cells and platelets. It's also responsible for the initiation of that clotting cascade. So what's the difference between these structures, the structure of an artery and a vein? Well, the arteries have very thick walls to withstand that high pressure, and the veins have thinner walls. Arteries are exposed to the highest pressures of any vessels. They have a thicker tunica media. Elastin allows them to stretch and recoil, and the smooth muscle allows them to constrict and dilate. Veins experience lower pressures. Their walls are thinner than arterial walls, and their lumens are larger, allowing them to accommodate a larger volume of blood. The tunica adventitia is the heaviest wall layer in veins. Veins also have valves. These valves are most abundant in the veins of the limbs, where the upward flow of blood is opposed by gravity. Understanding the basics of the vascular anatomy and how each layer impacts your vascular procedures is crucial for safe practice. We've discussed the skeletal system, the arterial system, and also the structure of our vessels. Now we're going to get right into the venous system. Now, we have all seen that proud nurse that has placed a PIV in the thumb. We're not gonna cover the veins of the thumb, veins of the fingers. Why you ask? Because we don't want you to place an IV there. Moving right along. There are situations where the dorsum of the hand will be appropriate for some of your patients. These are the metacarpal bones. These are the dorsal metacarpal veins. Makes sense, right? Now, as these come up, they will branch one direction or the other. And they also do a little communication here. Remember, as we spoke before, the pinky side is the basilic side. The thumb side radiates outward, to the outside cephalic vein. So as this branches out, comes up and branches, this is going towards our cephalic vein. This is gonna wrap around to our basilic vein. So now let's flip this over and look a little bit further into this region. I'm gonna turn it so you can see the numbers better and hopefully get a very good image for you. That's number 17, which is our basilic vein. Number 17 is basilic. Thumb side. Thumb side is radiates outward and that will correspond with number 19. Number 19 is our cephalic vein. There's a lot of other goodness in between that we will see. Knowing that we want our PIVs to last as long as possible, we know that this area in the forearm has been shown to have increased dwell time. 
number 16. Easiest way to call that is a median vein. There are other, we have the median anabrachial vein, you can call it the median anabrachial cephalic vein. Let's just say these are our median veins. Let's go a little further. We still have a couple more vessels to identify. Number eight. Number eight, we already said, is next to the radius. We have a radial artery. Radial artery is number eight. Along with that, there, it's paired with the radial veins. Radial veins, one and two. No. Ulnar artery, number nine, paired with ulnar veins. Perfect. Let's follow these guys up because this interesting stuff up here. As we follow number nine, number nine, we have the ulnar veins coming up, coming up, coming up, and they join here. They're going to join into the brachial vein, the brachial vein. Similarly, on the radial side, number eight comes up, and it's tough to see. Let's pull some of these vessels aside but it joins and makes the lateral vein, the lateral brachial vein. So right through there. So our radial and ulnar veins come together and make our brachial veins. Brachial artery, brachial veins. All these other goodness here. We've got 17. It's our basilic vein coming up and making the large basilic, but it's also joined by number 16, our median veins. Let's just call it median veins. So let's follow these and find out where they go and what they become. Cephalic vein coming up, it's joined or anastomosed into 21. 21 is the accessory cephalic vein. So it comes and continues upward into number 20, which is still the cephalic vein, but 19 is the cephalic vein. As it passes and it goes to 21 to the accessory cephalic, it also goes directly and communicates to the basilic vein. So cephalic goes both to the cephalic, accessory cephalic, and then back to the cephalic, but it also travels to the basilic vein. The basilic vein is also joined by all the flow from the basilic and the median veins. So that joins to become the basilic vein. vein. As we come up into the AC, we form this nice V right here, which is loved for venipuncture and also some of our, our friends in the ER like this area too. So working on that part our brachial veins, right next to the brachial artery, number six, our brachial veins are formed from our ulnar and our radial veins. So our ulnar vein, ulnar artery, ulnar vein, comes up and in this region, let's see if I can pull these aside enough. Let's move that artery out of the way a little bit. Don't you wish you could do that during procedures? Just scooch the artery out of your way. There we go. Now you can actually see. So these are the ulnar veins. Ulnar vein, ulnar vein. As it comes up, they join to create the medial brachial vein right here. Medial brachial vein right there as it joins. Guess, guess what veins come together to join the lateral brachial vein? You guessed it, it's the radial. So let's see if we can find them. A little bit tougher to move all these veins around, but oh, there we go, I found it, I found it. Wouldn't you love it though, seriously, to be able to move the arteries out of your way? Okay, we have our radial artery, radial veins. And as they come up, you're gonna see they're joining, coming up, joining right here. They come together to join and create that brachial, can you see? I want you to see. They join and create the lateral aspect. So there's two brachial veins. It's gonna be the one that radiates outward, so laterally. Lateral, coming from the radial veins. Medial, 
coming from the ulnar veins. Pretty cool, right? I think so. Our brachial vein coming up, coming up. We have the basilic coming up. And then we also have our cephalic still coming up. Now, as we see it, let me make sure I turn this so you can see the numbers clearly. This is our cephalic. And this is showing how it flows into the axillary vein, which is true, it does. But we all know that sometimes the, the vessel right around here looks large, plump, perfect to use. But as we try to turn this corner, it narrows, often right through here, but also, not shown clearly on this model, but it also makes a little hook into the axillary vein, making it really tough to thread at times. So just know that it dumps right into the axillary vein, and oftentimes that, that real tough hook makes it hard to thread your, your catheter all the way through. Now, our brachial veins, brachial and basilic vein, join and become the brachial vein, which flows into our axillary vein. That's it for the skeletal system, the arterial system, and the venous system. Now let's start talking about nerves. So I hope this has been helpful. I appreciate any comments you might have on this. Look forward to our next video on anatomy and physiology and other procedures with vascular access. Thanks for tuning in and come back often to the AVA Academy.